peoples of the world will plead with world leaders to deliver them from this evil. The one thing every man fears is the unknown. When presented with this scenario, individual rights will be willingly relinquished for the guarantee of their well-being granted to them by their world government. That statement was made in 1992, nine years before 9-11. Tyrants have long used fear as a tactic for acquiring more power. Hermann Goering, Hitler's second-in-command, said, Naturally, the common people don't want war, but after all, it is the leaders of the country who determine policy. And it is always a simple matter to drag the people along, whether it is a democracy, or a fascist dictatorship, or a parliament, or a communist dictatorship. All you have to do is tell them they are being attacked and denounce the pacifists for lack of patriotism in exposing the country to danger. It works the same way in any country. And Soviet Russian dictator Joseph Stalin said, the easiest way to gain control of the population is to carry out acts of terror. The public will clamor for such laws if their personal security is threatened. That's worth repeating, Dick. The easiest way to gain control of the population is to carry out acts of terror. The public will clamor for such laws if their personal security is threatened. Dick, when they use acts of terror to gain control of entire populations, one may wonder what the purpose of that control is. Well, that purpose was expressed by David Rockefeller, who said, We are on the verge of a global transformation. All we need is the right major crisis and the nations will accept the new world order. In addition to leaks, we have learned about the agendas of these secret groups from the insiders themselves. Such as Rear Admiral Chester Ward, who was a member of the CFR for 16 years. He warned the American people of the CFR's intentions. The most powerful clique in these elitist groups have one objective in common. They want to bring about the surrender of the sovereignty of the national independence of the United States. A second clique of international members in the CFR comprises the Wall Street international bankers and their key agents. Primarily, they want the world banking monopoly from whatever power ends up in the control of global government. Just about everything that the CFR and Bilderberg people do is treasonous, especially the way the CFR acts as a shadow government. Only the Congress is empowered by the Constitution to make our laws. But the Rockefellers control the CFR, which in turn controls the Congress. And most members of Congress, besides obeying the dictates of the big bankers, are wined and dined by 34,000 K Street lobbyists who represent big business and special interest groups. This is treason because they, the Congress and the lobbyists, are adhering to the enemies of the United States Republic. That's what the Constitution says, and we've got a copy right here. It's hard to see, but we don't have a camera operator to go in for a close-up. It's an old version going back to the 1930s, but the definition of treason has been there from the beginning in 1787. Treason against the United States shall consist only in levying war against them, the states, or in adhering to their enemies, giving them aid and comfort. No person shall be convicted of treason unless on the testimony of two witnesses to the same overt act or on confession in open court. And if anyone thinks that treason can occur only in wartime or be committed only by people who have sworn an oath to the Constitution, he is wrong. Any person can be convicted of treason against the United States at any time. The constitutional definition is quite clear. Rick. The information we have discussed so far about the CFR and the Bilderbergs and their plans for world government is probably new to most Americans because these groups control the mainstream media. That's right, Dick. They don't want us to know. And the way they control it is from the inside. Over 200 CFR members have or had supervisory or influential positions in the national media, including the New York Times, Washington Post, the major networks, Fox, CBS, NBC, ABC, CNN, etc., including National Public Radio, PBS, and major magazines. And this has been going on since at least 1915, when the Morgan Interest bought out the 25 most influential newspapers to, quote, properly supervise and edit information regarding things of national and international nature considered vital, unquote, 
to their interests. Those 25 newspapers are still in business today and still run by those with a vested interest in determining the information available to us and what we think about it. And that is why, since the CFR was created in 1921 and the Bilderberg Group in 1954, there has not been one single word published in any major newspaper or magazine indicating that either one of those organizations even exists, never mind what their mission is. Not one second of time has been given over to them on any television or radio station, including CBS's 60 Minutes, ABC's 2020, Dateline NBC, Nightline, and other shows pretending to be based on investigative reporting. Think of those veteran television news journalists like Richard C. Hotlet, Marvin Kalb, Daniel Shore, Leslie Stahl, Diane Sawyer, Barbara Walters, Tom Brokaw, Dan Rather, and Walter Cronkite. These are the correspondents you've watched for years and grown to trust to deliver the news honestly. When he was the anchor for the CBS Evening News from 1962 to 1981, Walter Cronkite was known as the most trusted man in America. But all of them are members of the CFR, and none of them would ever dare mention the CFR or the Bilderbergs on the air. Lou Dobbs is the one major media anchor who reports on the North American Union and other taboo subjects. He is not a CFR member, yet even Lou Dobbs dares not mention the CFR or the Bilderbergs. Dick, what do you suppose would happen if any one of those journalists wanted to host a documentary program on the Bilderberg Group? He or she would not even get to first base because every TV network is run by members of the CFR. The CFR, in turn, is run by the Rockefellers. Imagine that the journalist pushes his superiors hard. He will never be allowed to speak a single word on the air about the Bilderbergs. And if he tries to go to the public, he will be quietly sidelined and even fired. He would be blackballed in his profession. And suppose a non-journalist asked a question about the CFR during a press conference, as Alex Jones did when George Bush was governor of Texas during a Bush rally and speech in 1998 at a DuPont facility. The victory will be an endorsement of a philosophy. I believe in my heart of hearts the victory in 1998 is going to be good for Texas, and that's the most important thing about the campaign. Wouldn't, it, sir, shouldn't we abolish the Federal Reserve and the CFR? That's the real reality that none of you will talk about, most of you are members. That's what's destroying this country, Governor. Don't you stand for America, sir? What about the Federal Reserve and the CFR? You people are being lied to. This country's been taken over by Europe, and I'm being drug out. Laugh at it! The cameraman was threatened while he filmed the entire incident. The Texas police escorted Jones outside where he was handcuffed. Later, Jones was driven around the area for half an hour and then tossed out on the side of the road like so much garbage. The CFR derives much of its treasonous power from its control of the media. Richard Salant, former president of CBS News, said, Our job is to give people not what they want, but what we decide they ought to have. And David Rockefeller, ever so pleased with such cooperation from the media, made this statement. We are grateful to the Washington Post, the New York Times, Time Magazine, and other great publications whose directors have attended our meetings and respected their promises of discretion for almost 40 years. It would have been impossible for us to develop our plan for the world if we had been subject to the bright lights of publicity during those years. But the work is now much more sophisticated and prepared to march towards a world government. The supranational sovereignty of an intellectual elite and world bankers is surely preferable to the national auto-determination practiced in past centuries. Rick, that's an extraordinary statement. Mr. Rockefeller is saying that only the bankers are fit to rule the world. Well, we are not here to be ruled, and not by the bankers or anyone else. Dick, 
That is why we Americans wrote the Declaration of Independence in 1776, why we pledged our property and our lives, and why we went to war against King George III of England. It was to be free, not to be ruled. If you saw anything in part one that surprised or even shocked you, hold on to your hats for parts two and three, because you ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs>